Hey everyone, this is Techman1992 here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my playthrough of Final Fantasy VI, originally known as Final Fantasy III in North America in 1984, because this was the third Final Fantasy game for us, whereas Japan got had all six Final Fantasy games. I know it's a little confusing, but um back back in 2007 we got the game re-released as Final Fantasy VI on the Game Boy Advance. Pretty late into the system's lifespan. So this game is set in a fantasy world that has a technology level equivalent to the, to the Second Industrial Revolution. The game story follows an expanding cast and includes 14 permanent playable characters. And it's about an evil, it's about an evil empire that um, wants to exploit the, uh, the magical powers of these creatures called espers. When they die, they turn into magicide. And can be used to, um, they can be used to um, earn magic points and we earn enough you'll be able to learn a spell from them. So I'm gonna start a new game right now. Those two are my old files. I'm at, well, the one in front is Tara, she's at level 54. All right, I'm gonna start a new game right now. According to the developers, the um the game doesn't really have an official main character because um um they want to um they want to give the characters equal development and status without any other character standing above the rest. But um the mint the mint green haired girl, um Tara, the one I just showed you, she's used to represent the game. Like she's like She's kind of like the game's mascot. And she's also considered the first female main character in a main series in the Final Fantasy, in the Final Fantasy games. Now they're riding in, in, in these mechs called Magitech armor. They combine the power it combines the power of technology and magic to power up these machines and they can fire all sorts of weapons from magic missiles called or more like tech missiles to magical be elemental beams of energy. Now they they want to capture this other S that's been frozen in this town for like over a thousand years. Now she's being controlled by the Empire with the slave crown around her around her head. So she has no, she has no choice but to follow orders.
Now this game makes use of the active time battle system, and it was the first battle system to receive a, dedic a dedicated name. Final Fantasy IV, also known as Final Fantasy II in North America, that was the second game we got, makes use of it, but it didn't show the ATB gauge on there. But on here it does. Oh, I went, almost went to sleep now. Now the ATB gauge tracks when party members are going to act. When the gauge is full, members perform an action. Now after the action is executed, the ATB gauge is completed and must recharge. The, the rate which the gauge, gauge recharges typically um, revolves around the speed stat of the character and the battle speed, which can be adjusted in the options menu, which I will do. Mm -hmm. Combatants don't always get an equal number of actions on the t on a turn. The ATB introduced attack formations, an element on how the battle itself is played out. For example, there are preemptive strikes, meaning that you get you get to strike first before an enemy does, and there's a back attack. There's a back attack, meaning that your like um, your characters are on the on the left side of the screen, and enemies attack you from back from the back, and you have and that and um. And when you're attacked from the back, you take more damage because, um, obviously you're, you're not facing a defensive position. And then there's pincer attack, meaning that enemies trap you and you can't run away from battle, which, by the way, you do by holding down the L or R buttons. There's no run away command in the menu. You just hold down the SNES controller, like, the button, the L and R buttons in the SNES controller. And you keep holding until the characters run off the screen. Let's see. Well, that'll do. I'm gonna make it all black. Oh no, that should not, okay. All right, I got it now. Oh. You can't use these right now because I'm in my match attack mech. And these two are Imperial soldiers. Now, my match tech armor is more advanced than the other two, so I have more um, attack modes, like tech missile. Well, these guards are easy to beat because I'm in the match tech armor. Because their attacks deal a lot of damage. Now, GP stands for, um, I think, Gil. I used to think it stood for uh, gold, like gold points. But it stands for Gil. It's a type of coin or currency in the Final Fantasy series.
Now, Tonic is like the level one potion of the game. It only stores a minimal amount of health. Exactly, it's made him disappear. <clears throat> I guess it caused him to be banished or something. There's a spell called X Zone, and you used to open a portal to another to another world where they can't come back. felt like it anyway. Bye, Blaster. Um, well, it's basically a bio weapon. There's another. Um, well, it's not. It's not a Magitek um, attack, but it's a spell called. Um, I think. Oh, this is, oh, this is simply called poison. Yeah, it's, it's simply called poison. It, you just poison your enemies and take damage with it, but it's similar to another spell called bio, where you attack your enemies with viruses and bacteria and all that shit. <clears throat> There's a save point in here, I can use to uh, record my progress. Or I could just make a save state on here since I'm using Super NES Mini. <laughs> really careful not to select those. This is why I make copies of my files sometimes. That way if I overwrite one by accident or I erase one, I'll have another. Like as a backup. Alright, here's come here comes the first boss battle of the game. You have to battle this giant snail where if you attack the shell, it'll absorb energy and use that energy to attack you with it. So I gotta be careful not to hit it. Well we'll see about that. This game really has really good music on here.
when it says guru, when it, now the mess when the message up there says guru or guru, whatever it's whatever it says, um, it's gonna retreat back in its yeah. See, it's gonna retreat back in, in its shell. So I better not hit it. Now, if you press right on the D-pad, you can enter you can enter a defensive position and take less damage when the enemy hits you. Alright, it's coming back out. You know, for, when I first played this, I died when I, when I was battling this guy. So I kept on attacking the shell and I didn't mean to. I just kept on hitting the but I'm like, come on, I just want to hear him see what's next, you know, trying to rush. <laughs> now see, those meters right there are the ATB gauges. When they're full, I can attack. Count as attack and shell. Oh shit, it does. Oh, oh god, I'm never mind. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna move on in to get the frozen esper. Uh oh. User. We like the sound effects on here too. This is not a battle. I mean, it just looks like it, but um, it's, it's actually just a cutscene. Does that look okay? I paused it. Hmm? Now, since enemies attack you <clears throat> while your ATB gauge is, is um. It's not really turn based. I mean, it is turn based, but since it's not, it's not, but not really. It's not like where oh, you just the the game does not wait for you to make a choice or to make your command. So it has enemies attacking you, so you so that's why you can pause the game during a battle. Um, and let me see, how does that look okay? I'm trying to see how it looks on my camera.
All right, that's it for this clip. Thank you everyone for watching. Please give it a like, comment, subscribe. This is Techman1992 signing out. Have a good one. Stay safe. Oh, by the way, I paused the game right at the last minute right here before the next cutscene begins. All right, Techman1992 signing out. Stay safe, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video.